Let's talk about this thing called generational curses, okay? Most people take from Exodus 34 verse 7, which reads, Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children onto the third and to the fourth generation. This was God's covenant with Israel, which they have broken numerous times. And after they broke that covenant, God still was with them, never let them forsake them, kept to his word, kept to his promise, but also showed his heart in Ezekiel 18 verses 19 and 20, which reads, yet say ye why? Do if not the son bear the iniquity of the father, when the son have done that which is lawful and right, and have kept all my statutes, and have done them, he shall surely live. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. This, if you read Ezekiel, it's a whole foreshadowing, it's a whole prophecy of new covenant living. That's what Ezekiel 36 is talking about. But if you even get to 2 Corinthians and you go and read 5, 16, and 17, wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth we know him no more, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, meaning you're a Christian, not an Israelite, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, not some, not most, but all things are become new. This dispels that you have a generational curse because that passed away when you repented and gave up your life for Christ. That's why this idea of generational curses that Christians have them is unbiblical. It cannot be supported because this goes against what Jesus died for. Jesus died for all of that. So you cannot have a curse on something that God has blessed with his son, which was the sacrifice.